Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are looking at GCSE Chemistry, Topic 3, Quantitative Chemistry. By far one of my favourite modules, but um, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so that probably explains it. <laughs> um, just to preface this video, once all of this kind of basic content is out, I think there's 10 topics to go through, so I've still got a few more to go, but I will be working on uploading going through exam questions so do not fear if you're struggling with content now I will be putting more out in future to kind of help go through it and make it a little bit clearer for you hopefully I'll, hopefully I will get that up before exam season starts but like always if you have any questions please feel free to put them in the comments and either myself or your fellow students will come to your rescue and answer them and the usual please feel free to like subscribe um, and also let me know what kind of videos, if there's other subjects you want me to cover, whether that be GCSE or A-level, please feel free to let me know and I will work on it. But jumping straight in, we have the law of conservation of mass. So essentially, no atoms are lost or made during a chemical reaction, so the mass of the products is the mass of the reactants, aka chemical equations are balanced and have the same number of atoms of an element on each side. I'll explain this a little bit more on the next slide, but um, first up we have the relative formula mass, which is absolutely vital to this kind of um, bit of content. So th the MR, the relative formula mass of a compound, is the sum of the relative atomic masses of the atoms shown in the formula. So for example, uh, so just as a note, as a tip, this is where the periodic table comes in really handy because basically if you're ever not sure of something, go on to there. The formula, the mass that you want for each of the elements is the bigger number on the periodic table for it. So just head straight there if you're ever not sure. But um, so this example, hydrochlor hydrochloric acid, HCl, you've got one, which is the atomic mass for hydrogen and 35.5, which is the atomic mass for chlorine which gives you a relative formula mass of 36.5 for hydrochloric acid. The MR should be equal on both sides of the equation, aka balance. You know, we love a bit of balance around here. If a reaction appears to involve a change in mass, this may be due to a product actually being a gas, so that ob obviously when it's a gas, its mass cannot be taken into account. And whenever measurements are taken, there is always a certain level of uncertainty, so be prepared for estimations of uncertainty. You know, there, we'll discuss this a little bit further on in this presentation, in this video. But um, there are reasons why, you know, these measurements aren't 100%, why they won't be perfect. So, yeah, this is an example of a balanced equation of, yeah. So, what we basically want to be seeing is that we have the exact same number of each element on each side. So, you can see that the carbons match up the hydrogen matches up and the oxygen matches up. This is where these little numbers come in handy at the beginning of oxygen and water to try and make up for, you know, what um, make up for the imbalances that may be present without them. So, you know, you've got one carbon. You There's, there's no requirement to add any more carbon to this situation, so you can just leave them as they are. But that does mean you then need to account for the other elements in it so we've already got four hydrogens so we need to account for this in the water which means that we need two hydrogen um we need two water um compounds there but then we've also got to account for that then with the oxygen without that two there on the water we'd then be having three oxygens over here and we can't have three oxygens because oxygen only comes in twos so by adding this two here, that means we now have four oxygens we need to get over on this right-hand side. And so we add a little two on the oxygen on the left-hand side. It's a little bit more tricky because obviously you can't really see what I'm doing. I'm not drawing or anything. Um, I will be drawing within the exam questions and stuff, but it was just a little bit more... It was a bit more complicated for me to be able to draw during this presentation. So um, you'll have to bear with me. But of course, if you do have any questions, please, again, feel free to comment them. So now we are going to move on to looking at moles. So chemical amounts are measured in moles. So the unit being MOL, mole, it's pretty simple. 
The mass of one mole of substance in grams is equal to its relative formula mass. So, for example, the MR of iron is 56, which means that one mole of iron is 56 grams. Super simple, basically. Basically, you will just fall in love with the atomic for, or like the formula mass of each element and you will live by the periodic table, essentially. Um, for every substance, one mole contains the same number of particles, atoms, molecules, ions. Um, and you can see these are the main kind of equations that you will need in this little triangle thing on the right hand side. So this, bot this bottom left one is purely for solutions. This top one is more for solids. And then this one is kind of, if you've been given like the number of particles or something, it just depends on the different kinds of questions they want to ask you in the exams. But um, this bottom right one has got a beautiful little Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant, which is the number of atoms or molecules or ions in a mole of a given substance. And basically, so within one mole of any substance, there is 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23 atoms in it. So, yeah, no matter what the substance is, there will always be that many atoms or molecules in one mole of it. And just a little note for solutions, a smaller volume or larger mass of solute gives a higher concentration. Looking a little bit more at using concentration to solution. So, uh, concentration of solution can be measured in mole per given volume of solution, so moles per decimeter cubed. Uh, mass of a solute and the volume of solution are related to the concentration of this solution through mole equals concentration times volume. I believe that is what we have here, yes, on this little triangle. So moles in the top and then concentration times volume. You are, again, I say you live by the periodic table, but you also live by those tiny triangles. They will save your life in the exam. If the volumes of two solutions that react completely are known and the concentration of one solution is known, the concentration of the other solution can be calculated by working out the moles where volume and concentration is known, make, making sure that the units are correct, work out the moles of the other solution by a mole ratio from the equation. So again, we'll look at this on the next slide, but you can use the balanced equation to figure out the ratio of moles. And then now work out the unknown concentration by using concentration is a mole divided by volume. So just on that note, yes, so masses of reactants products can be calculated from a balanced symbol equation. Total moles of one element must be the same on both sides of the equation. So when it comes to the mole ratio and looking at the balanced equation, this is basically so for the, so te so really in really simple terms so there's one mole of ch4 that's just by itself so there's one of one mole but then there are two moles of oxygen because of this lovely little two on the left hand side of the symbol again there's one mole of co2 and two moles of water so that can show you the ratio basically and you can use that to try and work out the moles um, balancing numbers in a simple equation can be calculated from the masses of reactants and products. So convert those masses into grams to amounts in moles and place this into whole number ratios so you know how many moles you have compared to another compound. So say for example this, um, say the mass of um, CH4 is 0.5 grams and then the mass of, this doesn't really work because it's a gas, but the mass of oxygen is... Um, like one is one gram. So in a whole number ratio, that would be one to two. And that tells you the moles basically. Um, limiting reactants. So in a chemical reaction with two reactants, you'll often use one in excess to ensure that all of the other reactant is used. The limiting reactant is the one that is used up or not in excess. So once it's used, the amount of product produced is restricted to the amount of the excess reactant that reacts to the limiting one. So you want to use limiting reactant in calculations. If it says that something was used in excess in a reaction, you can pretty much eliminate that from any calculations. You don't really want that one. You just want the one that is limited. 
Then we've got a yield and atom economy. So more equations, which are my favorite. So you've got the equation at the top for percentage yield. So this is the amount of product produced um, over the maximum amount of product produced. So basically the theoretical mass or amount that you would expect times by 100, obviously to get it to percentage. So why percentage yield isn't 100%? Um, so the reaction, so essentially what we're trying to work out here is how much against the theoretical amount we should get, how much do we actually get? We want this obviously to be as high as possible so that we can reduce any waste product um, that we may be losing in some way. And this is kind of like why percentage yields isn't 100%. So the reaction may not go to completion as it is reversible. Some of the product is lost when separated, for example. It could literally just stay in the beaker. It could, it could get stuck in the little syringe or the droplet. You know, some of the reactants may react differently than expected as well. You know, there, there are other things going on in the world that the, um, so the chemicals might react to something else. To, to obviously calculate the theoretical mass of the product. So we want to calculate the mole of a reactant um, using the balancing symbols to find the mole of a product. And then calculate the theoretical mass using mass equals mole times formula mass. Then we've got atom economy. So this is more looking at the actual whole reaction itself. So this is the formula mass of the desired product divided by the sum of all reactants, including the desired product. So this is a measure of how sustainable and effective a reaction is for creating our desired product. We want the atom economy to be as high as possible to make sure we aren't creating too much waste product. But this is more so in the industrial world of chemistry when we're trying to form products such as, you know, medicines and things. We don't want to be creating too much. You know, it's not worth our while if our desired product isn't a, a major pro like isn't within the top end of the atom economy. It's not worth our while because we're creating too much waste product that we then got to deal with. So that's kind of why we calculate that, what it's for, just for a little context. But it's a super simple equation. You can just obviously use the MRs. And that's where we go back to the periodic table. Then just to finish off looking at volumes of gases. So equal amounts in mole of gases occupy the same volume under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. This is generally tends to be room, te room temperature and pressure, which can often be referred to as RTP. Um, RTP is 20 degrees and one atmosphere pressure, in just in case you weren't sure. So one volume of mole any, of any gas um, at room temperature pressure is 24 decimeter cubed. And then the volume of gas at RTP is moles times 24. Super simple. At least I think it's super simple. Um, but yeah, that is the end of the presentation, end of the video. Of course, if you do have any questions about anything or you want me to kind of talk about things a little bit more, um, please let me know. And of course, if there's anything else you want me to cover, then let me know about that as well. But I shall end it there and see you next time.